Welcome back. Today we're gonna tie Kelly Gallup's butt sump. This is a cross between a butt monkey and his sump. Um, I haven't reshot the sump on the multicam. I'm gonna get around to that one. I got a bunch of videos in the queue that I want to get to, but we'll get around to that one. And then once we start getting closer to you know spring and when the, when the bugs start hatching and all that, we're gonna transition into some into some nymphs and, and dries for a little while. But we're gonna hit a couple more streamers here for a good bit, and then I'll just sprinkle some in throughout the year, uh, throughout the summer as we get going. But like I said, we're gonna do Kelly Gallup's butt sump. It's a combination between the butt monkey and the sump. A great little sculpting pattern. Um, also a good one if you want to do like a trailer or something like that. This would be a great one for it. Um, I fish it a lot with a uh, you know the heavy sinking line. Uh, solo um, but if you're in like some smaller streams and everything this is a great small stream pattern um, with the with a dry line whatever it may be um, if you you know some of the smaller streams you can't get away with the with a sinking line or if you, if you do it's a it's a very light uh, like an intermediate sink or something like that um, this is a great one for the smaller streams and like I said it has almost a perfect profile for for the uh, for for a sculpin imitation it, it's near perfect um, and the fish just tear this thing up so we're gonna go right into it I'm gonna tie this one today in tan um, I'm gonna start and select just two tan grizzly chickaboo plumes here I think there's two there yep we're gonna tie two of these in for our tail section. The hook that I'm using today is an MFC 7050 size four. I'm gonna have this tail just slightly shorter than the overall length of the hook. This is probably the biggest that I'll tie this fly in. Um, a lot of times I'll scale it down to even like a, a size 10 even on a 3x if I'm fishing some of the smaller streams back home where you got like the dace minnows and all that um, this is a would even imitate that really well tied down small enough and depending on how you sculpt the head and all that but this is a great imitation for that and like I said I'll tie these even down to a 10 um, let's see here I just want one strand of flashaboo set that off to the side we'll go ahead and double this as always for two strands per side take this set this into place get a couple of wraps on it advance forward double it over and then bring it on your opposite side just gives you a little bit of added flash to the fly you can scale the flash up or down depending on what you want and then we'll go ahead and trim that off. And then I'm gonna go with one more plume on the top. I don't know if I'm gonna like this plume or not. So I'm gonna eyeball it here first and see how it does. It's a little twisted, but I think we'll be able to work with it. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. get that tied into place I'm gonna give it one more look before I say okay let's roll with it and that'll work the, the tails a little fanned out um, kind of one going top and bottom but as soon as it gets in the water it gets wet you're not gonna notice a big difference you're not gonna notice a difference at all um, that's a nice full tail right there so we're gonna go ahead and stick with that then I'm gonna go to a brassy size copper wire I'm gonna tie this in this is gonna be a counter wrap for our hackle Just grab a little piece of this and then trim that off. Get that set off to the side. We'll go in one, two, three. And we get one more, double that over. That way it stays locked into place for you. 
And then we're gonna go with some cactus chenille for a body. This is just a tan cactus chenille. Really gives, a, it's a medium, I should say. I went right through that portion of it. This is a medium tan cactus chenille. So we're just gonna peel some of these fibers back. We're gonna go right to the cotton section. We're gonna get that tied in. That way we don't have added bulk to the body. And then I'm gonna take that forward right about to where I'm gonna start the head. sitting. Get that first wrap in there. There's a couple of them that I didn't like. I'll pick those out a little bit. Kind of flattened out on me slightly. I'm not too crazy about that, but I can pick that out with the bodkin or eh, actually it's not it's not terrible. I'll live with it. Let's see what it looks like. on the bottom. We look pretty good, so I'm not too concerned about it. So now from here, what we're going to do is grab a piece of hackle. This is like um, describe this in the Mike's Pex video. This is kind of like a hybrid between um, a shallopin and a saddle. And the thing that I really like about this stuff is it matches your, it's all from the same patch, so it matches perfectly as far as colors are concerned. You're not gonna have differences in dye baths or anything like that. It's all on the same patch. You're getting the same color with your hackle and your chickaboo. So it really, that's a real big added benefit to it. That and this is, size just about perfectly for <laughs> UPS truck I can't stand UPS FedEx are cool with I don't know why I freak out when I UPS rolls around. Maybe it's a union thing. Who the hell knows? Anyhow, that uh, chaos is done for now. Like I was saying, we we're going to go into this hackle here. And. Eh, that looks alright. That looks alright. Like I was saying, prior to Cam losing her mind over the UPS truck, um, the size on these is about perfect for the smaller flies. I think that's about where I left off, I can't remember. But anyhow, we'll get that tied in. That's gonna fill out our body just slightly. Add a little twist on that hackle. I tied about a dozen DFTs the other day and did not have one hackle spin on me. The second I get on camera, that hackle spins. So I think it's just destined to, to fight me on, on the videos. Anyhow. Or it wasn't the DFTs, what was it? Mike's Pecs, I think. I think I did about a dozen of them and not one of them spun. And then there we go on video. But anyhow, there we are. We're sitting. We've got our flash going down in the tail. We've got our hackle. We've got the body. Everything's in place. Everything's starting to come into shape here. What we're going to do now is take two lateral lines. And this is going to be off-colored uh, from the fly by design. I could go back into the patch right here. I'm going to go with this hackle. I use this a lot. Um, on the uh, 10 Octobers and I love the way that it offsets on the color. Um, you have that little bit of black running through there. Um, 
it, it's just a nice offset to the tan. So I'm gonna run these down here. These are gonna be our lateral lines. And I want these extending past the tail just slightly. So right about like that is what I'm gonna want on there. I'm gonna get this one tied in. Set that right into place. Go one, two. Nice loose wraps on this to start just to make sure that your fibers are gonna run laterally for you. There you can see it's running nice out just how we want it. I'm not gonna, well, I am gonna tighten that up here now. Be careful when you, especially if you have a thick stem, be careful when you initially set that down and really wrench down on it. If it's a thick rounded stem, it's gonna have a tendency to roll as, as you apply the pressure. If you've got a really thick stem, if you're working with some older hackles or whatever it may be, some bigger hackles with a thicker stem, just kind of smooth them out with some scissors or anything. You can take your scissors, once you strip all those fibers off, pinch this down there and then just roll it back and it'll, it'll flatten your stem out and make it a little bit more manageable for you. But these ones here, I mean, these are nice thin stems, so they're going to be pretty easy to work with. They're not going to fight me too awful much. So now I'm just going to take one for the opposite side here. I'm going to lay this down. Make sure that my length is going to be how I want it, even with the last one. And then nice loose wraps to start. Making sure that it didn't roll. That one did roll on me slightly, so I'm just going to back this off and start over. That one did roll slightly on me. I'm just taking, flatten that out. See if that'll help out. Get the length of my lateral lines good. Start that one a little bit more to the top. There we go, I trapped one hackle fiber. There we go, that's a nice lateral line right there. And then I'm just gonna come back to this side. I'm gonna double this over and just catch it instead of trying to fight it and trim it. That'll give me a little bit more security. And then get a couple of good firm wraps right in the front. And then you can see we have nice even lateral lines. They're not twisted on us or anything and it's going right down the side, everything looks good. Now we're gonna go with one more um, plume of chickaboo. I may have to do two depending on the thickness of it, if I like it, if I like it or not. Um, I'm just gonna do two regardless. I'm just gonna do two regardless. I think it'll look better fill the fly out just a little bit. Now I want this, I want this chickaboo going back into my tail section. So it's gonna be a little bit on the longer side. Just tie that in right where we left off. There we go, that chickaboo's going back and that's actually a pretty, that's a decently thick plume right there, but I think I'm gonna go with one more I'm gonna go with one more just to fill it out a little bit more. Just fill that out a little bit more, add a little bit more bulk to this. And we'll get a look at this and see, see what we think. That looks pretty good there. When we lay in our our wool head, it's gonna it's gonna lay that down slightly, so not a big deal at all that it's sticking up a little bit right now. We're gonna have this wool head go in there and really lay this thing down. So we're on to the ram's wool here. This is gonna be the last step in this process. 
if you want to if you if you want to stick with the color theme through this you can take some brown and mix it in with your with your tan i'm just going to go straight tan on this i don't really see a need i fished this one this way for the longest time and it's done well for me so i don't really see a need to add any brown into this other than for the tire it'll catch more people than it will fish if you add the brown sometimes that's what matters though sometimes that's what matters at least at least to some folks I'm not gonna take any shots in anybody I'm not taking any shots it's an art just like anything else you know I mean folks spend a ton of time tying some beautiful flies I mean they look great look phenomenal the work is is impeccable but I really wonder how many fish get caught off of some of those flies and it just look pretty All right, kind of getting sidetracked there. I'm just advancing this slightly forward. Um, I'm going to wind up with probably six smaller stacks of ram's wool in here. I'm not going real heavy on my stacks. Um, I just want enough in there that it's going to give me good coverage enough to where I'm going to be able to form a good head out of this, but it's not going to be so compact with the wool that uh, won't be able to get any water in between there. So once again, I'm just going to set that in, pull this right in the front. Things are starting to come into shape and then I'm just going to do one piece one thick piece and I'm gonna work that in as a cone to give me some coverage going back there we go we'll take this open that up and just set that right over the top I want one two solid wraps right on top of one another and I'm just gonna peel all of that back and then I have a nice clean eye to work with here get there there we go Everything's looking pretty good so far. Now we're going to take a bodkin. We're just going to run this through here, kind of pull the stuff from the top down into the bottom and then vice versa. Just move this stuff around, make sure that we don't have any sections that are really uh, tangled up or anything like that. Now I just want to take, find the front, make a vertical cut. And remember that we are tying or imitating a sculpt in here. So we're going to have a nice rounded fat head in the front and then flat on the bottom. Get that out of the way. Want that collar pretty exaggerated. Not quite as thick as what I have it right there. This bottom section, I'm going to peel this stuff up and I just want to make a flat cut right on the bottom right there. Got a few stragglers running around. There we go. I can flatten that out even a little bit more, actually. There, that's a nice flat bottom section. And the top, I still have decently wide. I'm just going to come through here and I'm going to get a little bit more of a shape out of this. I want to round it just slightly more and then take some of that collar out of there. Pull this out of the vise and we're going to 
just shape this against the grain get the general profile that we're after and I'm gonna leave that be I'm gonna leave that be minus one little eh, that's fine right there I'm gonna leave it I'm gonna leave it all right there is Kelly Gallup's butt sum and I really need to find this damn Allen key here. I want to be able to spin that a little bit better. Maybe I'll just zoom in from the front really good. There we go. I'll just spin it on the vice right like that. There is Kelly Gallup's butt sump. This thing is a phenomenal sculpin imitation. A phenomenal small stream fish or fly and like I said this is one that would be good to use to run as a trailer I still fish it by itself even on the bigger rivers and this thing just flat out hunts it's just such a great imitation um, and an easy fly to tie I mean something that you can you can fill a box up on these pretty quick once you hit your stride really get to running on these things but questions or comments as always leave them with me and I'll get back to you thanks guys as always for watching and we'll catch you on the next fly